In this video, I'm going to show you the Excel skills for section 5.4 in your book, which is the central limit theorem. We use the central limit theorem anytime we're looking for a probability about the average of a group of people. So the big things when you're reading these problems is to identify whether we're talking about one individual, a person, or a sample, or if we're talking about the average of a group of people, or the average of a group of samples. If it's just one person, one individual, we use the techniques we learned back in 5.2 and do the problem directly. But if we're looking at the average of a group of people, then we use the central limit theorem and find a new mu sub x bar and sigma sub x bar. So let's look at some examples. It says the body temperatures of adults are normally distributed with a mean of 98.6 degrees Fahrenheit and a standard deviation of 0.6 degrees Fahrenheit. If an adult is randomly selected, find the probability that his mean body temperature is less than 99 degrees Fahrenheit. All right, so let's see, are we talking about a person or a group? It says if an adult, that means just one. So we're finding the probability a single sample is less than 99 degrees Fahrenheit. This is doing the problem directly, just like we would have done back in 5.2, because we're talking about an individual. So we're given a value, the 99 degrees, and we're trying to find the probability or the area. That, this is when we use norm dist. We use norm dist if we're given a value and we're trying to find the probability. We use norm inverse if we're given the probability or an area and we're trying to find the value. So in this case, we're given the value and we're trying to find the area to the left. All norm functions are in reference to the area on the left, so we can just plug it in. So I'm going to go up to function wizard, I'm already in statistical, go down to norm dist, our point is 99, the mean is 98.6, standard deviation is 0.6, and for the norm functions we always put true because we're looking for the total area to the left. So the probability an individual has a body temperature less than 99 degrees Fahrenheit is 0.7475, so about 75%. Next scenario, it says the body temperatures of adults are normally distributed with a mean of 98.6 degrees Fahrenheit and a standard deviation of 0.6 degrees Fahrenheit. If 25 adults are randomly selected, find the probability that their mean body temperature is less than 99 degrees Fahrenheit. So again, are we talking about a person or the average of a group of people? Well, it says if 25 adults are selected, find the probability that their mean body temperature so this is classic central limit theorem. We have a group of people and we're finding a probability about their average. So now we're finding the probability that the average of this group, so that's the x bar, is less than 99. So now in our p statement, our probability statement, we're trying to find the probability that the average, which we represent by x bar, x bar represents the average of a group, is less than 99. So to do this, we need to know our values for mu sub x bar and sigma sub x bar. I'm sorry for the kind of clumsy way of typing it out. Um, symbols are very difficult in Excel. So mu sub x bar is the same thing as mu, so it's still 98.6 degrees. But sigma sub x bar is defined to be the old sigma divided by the square root of our sample size. So our new sigma is going to be 0.6 divided by the square root of 25. So now when we go to norm dist, we're still looking for area to the left, so we can just plug everything in. But when we go to norm dist, let's see, area to the left, we're looking for the left of 99. Our mean is still 98.6, but now our standard deviation is the new value. The 0.6 divided by the square root of 25, and then for cumulative we put true. So the probability that a group of people's average is less than 99 degrees is almost 1. That's 0.9996. That's a really high probability. So comparing it to the previous part, the odds one person is less than 99 is only about 75%, but the odds the average of a group is less than 99 is almost 100%. And that's because if you have a group of people, you expect there to be some people with a higher temperature and also some people with a lower temperature. It would be really strange to pick a group that all run hot. You would expect kind of the hot people to balance out the cooler people, bringing you closer to the average. All right, another example. 
The body temperatures of adults are normally distributed with a mean of 98.6 degrees Fahrenheit and a standard deviation of 0.6 degrees Fahrenheit. If 30 adults are randomly selected, find the probability that their mean body temperature is greater than 99 degrees Fahrenheit. So again, we're looking at 30 people and we're trying to find the probability that their mean, their average, is greater than 99. This is central limit theorem. So we're trying to find the probability that x bar is greater than 99. So because it's central limit theorem, we need to identify what our mu sub x bar and our sigma sub x bar are going to be. Mu sub x bar is the same thing as mu, it's 98.6. Sigma sub x bars are old sigma divided by the square root of our sample size, which is 30 in this case. And these are the numbers we'll use when we go to plug into Excel. All right, so we're looking for the probability we're greater than 99. Well, greater than is the area to the right. Norm functions always give us the area to the left. So just like we've seen before, to get what's on the right, we have to do 1 minus the area to the left, and the area to the left is given by our norm function. So we're going to have to do equals 1 minus norm dist, because norm dist gives us the area to the left of our points 99, our x bar is 98.6, our standard deviation is that new 0 0.10954 number, and then we always put true for the norm functions. So we see the probability of a group of people's average being greater than 99 is 0 0.0001. That's like a one, let's see, 10, 100, 000, that's like a one in 10,000 chance. That's very, very slim that a group of people would have this high of an average temperature. All right, one more example. It says the body temperatures of adults are normally distributed with a mean of 98.6 degrees Fahrenheit and a standard deviation of 0.6 degrees Fahrenheit. If 25 adults are randomly selected, find the probability that their mean body temperature is between 98 degrees Fahrenheit and 99 degrees Fahrenheit. So again, for this problem, we're looking at 25 adults and we're finding a probability about their mean. So this is central limit theorem because we're looking for the probability of an average. So we're trying to find the probability that our X bar is between 98 and 99. So we've got to find mu sub x bar and sigma sub x bar. We know mu sub x bar is the same thing as mu, is 98.6. Sigma sub x bars are old sigma divided by the square root of our sample size, which is 25, so 0 0.6 divided by the square root of 25. So to find the area in between, we have to know that the norm dist of 99 gives us everything to the left of it, and then the norm dist of 98 gives us everything to the left of that point. But we don't want what's to the left of 98. We only want the area in between them. So we have to subtract the norm dist of 98 from the norm dist of 99. So putting it into Excel, it's going to look like norm dist of 99 with our mean our standard deviation and true, then minus the norm dist of our lower point, which is 98, with the mean, the standard deviation, and true. So this tells us that, wow, that's a really big number. There's a 0.9996 chance that this group's average temperature is between 98 and 99 degrees. And that makes sense. I think the standard body temperature is 98.6. So you would expect in a group of people there to be some higher and some lower, but they're going to average out to be really, really close to the middle.